go to a party. You're not planning on drinking, but everyone around you is, and you want to be part of the fun. Pretty soon, one beer turns into two, and suddenly you're taking shots. Before you know it, you're drunk, but you drove to the party, so you think, I can still drive home. I can get everyone home. Drunk driving doesn't always seem like a bad idea. A lot of the times you think, I'm not too far from home, or I'm not that drunk. I can handle it. Maybe you can handle it. Maybe that one time, nothing will happen. But what happens if you can't? What happens if you get pulled over, you get into a car accident and hit a pole or a bridge or another car? How does your life change? And how easy was it for you to prevent this very situation you just put yourself in? Drunk driving hits close to home to me. It's something I'm very passionate about. My name is Abby Wasserslaven, and I hope you choose to not take a chance on drinking and driving. MAD, also known as Mothers Against Drunk Driving, states that in 2015, 10,265 people were killed and approximately 290,000 people were injured from drinking and driving. Drinking and driving doesn't just impact one person. It impacts families, friends, coworkers, and classmates. It's an ongoing issue, but together we can stop it. The NHTSA, a government website, says that alcohol is absorbed directly through the walls of someone's stomach and small intestine. It then courses through the bloodstream and is broken up in someone's liver. Police measure your BAC when you get pulled over. That's your blood alcohol concentration. And when they're doing so, they're measuring the weight of alcohol in your blood. The CDC says that a BAC over 0.08 is illegal in all 50 states. But crashes with BACs under 0.08 still happen on a daily basis. The NHTSA says that, um, that 1,764 people were killed in 2014 due to those accidents with blood alcohol levels under 0.08. Alcohol can affect up someone's ability to drive, so it's important to think about the consequences before you get behind the wheel of a car. Healthy Eating states that approximately 112 million adults reported drinking and driving in 2010. That's a third of the United States population in 2015, according to the World Census Bureau. Think about that for a minute. That's a crazy number, and it doesn't touch upon people that they don't consider to be adults in the study, or people that do it multiple times, or people that were injured or killed in accidents as a result. That's the biggest problem with drinking and driving, the accidents that are a result. Driving intoxicated affects your ability to control the vehicle properly. The NHTSA says that alcohol can reduce the functions of the brain, impairing thinking, reasoning, and muscle coordination. Those very functions are what we rely on a day-to-day -day basis to drive smoothly are affected when you drink and drive. Think about a drunk person's actions. Think about what they do that they normally wouldn't do because they have this alcohol in them that's giving them this courage. They think they can handle anything and do anything. That same reasoning can and will affect someone's ability to operate a motor vehicle properly. A car accident doesn't just affect you. It affects you, your family, if there's anyone in the car with you. It affects them and their family. If there's a multiple car accident, it'll affect all of those people and their family and their friends. That's the biggest issue with drinking and driving, the car accidents and the after effects of those accidents. You aren't just changing your life, your actions are affecting others. So as a society, how can we stop and combat drinking and driving? Now there is no simple, clear solution, but there are small things we can all do to help this problem. State Farm's website has some great tips when it comes to stopping drinking and driving. If you plan on drinking, don't plan on driving. Designate someone else to drive that night and make sure they don't drive and make sure they don't drink or call a lift or an Uber or a taxi at the end of the night. If you weren't going to drink and you did end up drinking, don't stress yourself out. Don't punish yourself for deciding to. Figure out a solution. Call a taxi, call a friend, spend the night, or use public transportation. There are so many options when it comes to getting home. We also have a responsibility to others when we see them drinking. If you know your friends have been drinking, don't let them drive. I was once at a party and saw one of my friends having a couple beers, but I didn't think anything of it. The next day, I found out that she had crashed into a ditch. If I had stopped her from drinking and driving, that might have not happened. That's one of the reasons you need to watch not only your actions at a party, but your friends as well. Drinking isn't bad, and I don't want people
people to be scared of drinking, but I want them to be scared of drinking and then driving. The legal BAC is so because of scientific research, because alcohol affects the way you drive, because it affects your mental status. So don't disregard the law. It's set there for a reason. If you're going to a party, plan out your ride if you plan on drinking. And if you decide to drink last minute, that's fine. Just make sure you don't drive after the fact. If you see a family member, friend, even a stranger somewhere drinking, do your best to keep them from getting behind the wheel of a vehicle. You will be saving their life and other lives potentially. It's really the best thing to do. If every person does a little bit to combat drunk driving, at the end of the day, we could save them hundreds of lives and ultimately fix the problem.